Hello, and welcome to this special edition revisit. This is Pencil Pennsylvania Dutch Eggnog Revisited, and the last time I tried this was 2019. I didn't realize it was that long ago, so... Um, normally, a handle like this will run about $19.99, if you're lucky, or $20.99, if you're unlucky, but yeah, $19.99 and $20.99. So, when Dixie... had this on closeout because, you know, winter is at its peak, but, uh, you know, we passed the holidays, so they're trying to get rid of it, so it was $12.99, so I couldn't pass it up $12.99. Made with, they said save, save $13. I kind of find it hard to believe that they were selling it for $25.99, but knowing them, they kind of high, but most stores had it for $20.99, $19.99. Shake well before pouring, serve chilled which is very chilled, refrigerated after opening. Made and bottled by Dairyland Distillers Company, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, 29 and a half proof, 29.5 proof. So this is one of the stronger uh, pre-mixed uh, eggnogs, and it's made with real dairy cream, rum, brandy, and blended whiskey. So they got rum, brandy, and blended whiskey. So... It's probably one of the best pre-mixed uh, eggnogs, honestly, and uh, it's probably the most popular one. I, I, I would think it is the most popular one, but they have some really good ones, other other good ones. Evan Williams is a jewel, and Winn-Dixie had that discounted for, to $5.99 for the 750 milliliter, which is a steal. Zachariah Harris is good. Uh, Old New England is good from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, saw that this week. Uh, can't buy everything though. I've already had it. Um, the uh, oh, you know what it was? It was benchmark old number eight. Benchmark uh, eggnog they had for five ninety nine, which is. Wonderful also, but Evan Williams, Benchmark, they're all good. They're all good. Have I had a have I had a bad one yet? Uh no, I don't think so. Alright, so um see if they make a caramel color statement. Original brand. Uh, no, I don't see anything about that. Old style eggnog, built in pour. Yeah, so I guess it's just the natural color from the cream and the different liquors in it. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, I've been to Philadelphia many times, and I've been on the outskirts. And honestly, you don't have to go too far west of Philadelphia, and you get into farmland. I mean, you know, you get some suburbs, and then it's straight farmland. Very uh, old time in some cases. Okay, um... You can see a swirl in here like it wasn't totally blended, like different things like mixed together. All right, so kind of a yellowish, tan, white appearance. Can't believe it's been five years since I've had it, or close to that, 2019, 2024, but, you know, depending on the months. Strong sugary cream in the nose, so cheers. It's a thick, gelatinous, in, this, in a sense, body and mouthfeel. But that's from the egg whites and the egg yolk. Um, very eggy. It's really the most authentic flavored pre-mixed eggnog. Now, I like the Old New England, and they do a good job with it. And I like the Zachariah Harris, and I like the Evan Williams, and I like the uh, Benchmark. And those are the main ones you get. Like, those are the main eggnogs you get around here. I'm talking about the alcoholic-infused eggnogs. I mean, there are others. There are many others. But I'm saying around here, southeastern Louisiana, New Orleans area, that's what you get. But I think Pennsylvania Dutch wears the crown because it really is the king. It's oh so popular. And to find this handle bottle, 
Plastic, okay, I don't care. I buy milk in plastic bottles, jugs. Has it ever uh, affected me? Not to my knowledge. Um, if you want a 750, get it. It's in glass. But for $12.99, it's, it's amazing. I pour it at the bottom of the coffee cup, pour the hot coffee on top. Don't need to use a spoon. Just the pouring agitation blends it. Uh, to a large extent, it's a wonderful morning time product. Um, but it's very eggy, creamy. The brandy, the rum, the uh, blended whiskey all meld together very well. I don't know what they did to get it so good. I guess it's just a lot of trial and error. <clears throat> but uh, it it's really hard to beat. But of course, like I said, I mentioned those other products and I would be very happy to have the other ones. I would be fine with those. Um, now, if you want to try some strange stuff, uh, Trader Joe's has a wine-based eggnog, which is different. Good, but it's different. Uh, then they have the liquor-based eggnog, I think it's made with rum, and that's nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's probably in the mix with these, but but really, the uh, the Pennsylvania Dutch does rise above the others, and um, it's the best so far. It's like a savoriness to it. does remind me of those eggnogs and they weren't pre-mixed I'm thinking in 1974 we would go to people's houses and Christmas parties and they had the eggnog you know from the carton the paper carton from Borden or Kleinpeter or Brown's Velvet they were probably adding you know Corbell or Christian Brothers or E&J Brandy but it reminds me of that. <clears throat> and they would usually add nutmeg or cinnamon. I think cinnamon around here. But I would like to try nutmeg next. Go around. Mm. It does bring back memories from 50 years ago. Now, when I was 6 years old, I was not drinking a whole glass of spiked eggnog. But I was taking enough sips from my parents that I probably did drink a whole glass of spiked eggnog. And it, uh, I remember the flavor. And I remember thinking in 1974, I don't know if I like this flavor. You know, you know why do people want to drink that? You know, when I was six years old. But now, you know, I, at, as you get older, you grow in, you grow into flavors like avocado and so forth and bell pepper. But... Um, I can remember being two years old, three years old, two and three years old, sipping Miller High Life Schlitz from those little uh, squat bottles, seven ounce or 12, but they were always short neck. And you, you're little, you know, you say, let me have some, let me have some. And the parents, I'm speaking for Louisiana, let you sip it. So then they're having a barbecue for four hours and you keep sipping it. It's just like, I just remember it'd be hot, June, July, August. May, June, July, August, September, and it was just so good, you know, those beers were so good as a two-year-old, and so, um, and this does bring me back, and it, it's, it brings me to the present, because it's still fabulous, so I would highly recommend it, and it, I mean, if you see a, a handle jug bottle, because it has a handle on the back, a jug bottle like this for $12.99, I mean, you can't resist, then you can't resist. <laughs> So, the score, uh, I shouldn't wait five years to do another revisit, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, some people heat eggnog. That's fine. And I've had it hot, warm, or say warm, and it's very good. But they're recommending chilling it. And I think if the manufacturer is saying chill it, then you, you, you might want to go along with what they're saying. But, oh, it's, you know, with the uh, cinnamon or without, it's a solid A, 95 out of 100, 9.5. So if you've never had Pennsylvania Dutch, well, now here we are, 
later on in the winter so you may have to wait till the next cool down in 2024 late 2024 but uh yeah it'll be around every every liquor store sells this i mean they all sell it it's not not one in louisiana doesn't sell it and i'm sure it's the same for your state it's ubiquitous ubiquitous it's everywhere so it's a beautiful um label with the painting of the wheat fields or, or, or other grains with the horse and carriage and the cow in the background the uh pennsylvania mountains in the background so yeah it's wonderful all right so lazy le montan relay a fabulous product it wins every time and all their cream liqueurs they're a little thinner body so they're not as good but they're still very good and uh, those win every time and I'm gonna end this review by saying y'all go to Philadelphia Pennsylvania and take a cordial distillery tour